I'm Arya Schwartz, along with Rachel Galligan, and welcome to the Windsider Show, where it's all about the W. Tip-off weekend was a wild one with tons to unpack. Blowouts and overtime, and a new top dog? Let's jump right in. like our show please consider joining our patreon community patreon.com backslash windsider for less than a cup of coffee a month you can directly show support for the hard work we do covering the w and don't forget to see our amazing staff's written content over at windsider.com that's windsider.com are you looking to get tickets for your upcoming WNBA season thanks to our sponsor tick pick you don't have to worry the original no fee ticketing site and official ticketing partner of the WNBA champion chicago sky use the link t-i-c-k P-I-C-K dot com backslash Winsider for all your upcoming ticket purchases for the WNBA, NFL, NBA, or any other event. That's TickPick.com backslash Winsider. Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. <laughs> Monday is here. The season is here. We've got a couple games under our belt. How you feeling? <laughs> um, I'm good. I'm good. A lot to unpack. A lot to... Um... Lot to talk about. I'm here for all the overreactions, though. That's the biggest part. <laughs> right? Oh God, it's so fun. It, it, it but like, you know what? I, here's the thing. I gotta say, if you remember, just you know, a few years ago, it it does feel. I feel the growth in the early days of the season, and there's something so invigorating <laughs> of the first, like the the. I don't know. I mean, the this player's MVP. This team's horrible. This team's amazing after two games. Um, I mean, if we're if we're basing it correctly off those overreactions, Indiana is no longer the bottom dweller. I mean, but they're zero and two. Fair. <laughs> all right, all right. That, that's a fair point. Yeah, but at least they're like putting up legitimate. You know. I mean, they they, they they were they had a pulse. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> They were competing, you know, all jokes aside, I I really, really like for the first time. And, you know, everybody knows I lived in Indiana. I was there when they won the championship. I've seen this franchise through its heyday and and what it's been the last few years. It it was really, really refreshing to not only watch uh, this team compete, but also like, you know, in a a time where, you know, all the talk is about all these ta- talented players getting waived and not making rosters, blah, blah, blah. It's really nice to see rookies come in be thrown into the fire right away and, and gain that confidence and, and experience right off the bat. Um, it's just really refreshing to watch Indiana right now. And yeah, I mean, let's be honest in, 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 in the grand scheme of things, this is the, the, the first step of a massive rebuild here with this franchise but you know you just see the promise they, they were competing and I think you have some pieces there that are going to be a lot of fun to watch this year yeah it, it, at least they've turned a corner yeah now is this new is this new direction the, the right direction we don't know yet time will tell but at least they've turned a corner and for so long it felt like they weren't able to turn that corner I agree with you let me do a quick little recap I'm not gonna bog you down with the stats and all the numbers or whatever but the mystics be opening night recap uh, Mystics beat the Fever, the Sparks in overtime in Chicago beat the shorthanded Sky, the Storm embarrassed the Lynx, and the Mercury were embarrassed by the Aces. Um, I don't think, I mean, that Chicago game was great to watch. Mm-hmm. What did you think about that one? I guess let's talk about that for a sec. I got to think back in my mind what happened. Yeah, right? I mean, been a- <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I think Chicago should have won the game. Um, I was really, I go back to that questionable. In regulation. Yes. Let me be clear. In regulation. Yes. I think it goes back to that, that, that foul call with Canada. Um, I, I felt like that was a bit phantom, you know, in one way or another, but you know, nonetheless, um, Canada goes to the line, knocks down three free throws. Oh. It goes to overtime and, and, and LA took care of business. Um, you know, obviously you, you cannot point you know, a, a game to, to one single call that we could look at a thousand different things that Chicago or LA, whatever that could have gone different. But when it comes to that game right there, like, you know, I, I'm not 
by any stretch panicking or freaking out as a Chicago Sky uh, person who's analyzed them deeply over the years. You know, I just felt like one one little call goes a different way and it's a different outcome. So it was a really, really good game. I mean, honestly, I think the bigger story here is L.A., you know, and, and that was such a wild card coming into the season. There's no doubt this team has firepower. There's no doubt this team has a lot of personality and, and potential, but how is this team going to look on the court together? And you got to give it to the Sparks. They showed out on opening weekend. Oh, they definitely did. I mean, look, we I, I don't want to pat ourselves on the back, but I think we said, like, this is a team that's going to have very high highs, yeah. and they're going to stall out, and they're going to have some really low lows. Yeah. Um, didn't, a we very predict, interesting thing, didn't we predict that L.A. would win that game? We did. Wow. Not, not, I mean, uh, I'm not just bragging. Or <laughs> I believe the uh, Rachel. So I'm not going to, I'm only going to count for pick them, by the way, the ones that we specifically pick on the show. That's what I've decided for this year, because, you know, sometimes we don't get the picks in this, at least everything's on record. So right now I'm three and one, you're four and oh, um, because we had, we had the split on Seattle. So obviously I thought Seattle was going to win. Um, but I, I'll, I'll give that one to you. But at some point, you're going to have to pick Chicago when you think they're going to lose. Deal? I can do that. All right, cool. I, that. Um, <laughs> I do want to point out, and actually, you know what? I'll get to it when we talk about this. Um, let's just speak about the headlines from opening weekend. We were going to talk about uh, the Lynx first, um, but instead, I think, let's go to Jordan Canada first, a player who right now, I mean, Liz Cambage had a great game in Indiana. Um, had that double double with twenty some points. Um, personal opinion, she hasn't looked as dominant. She needs to get her legs under her. She doesn't look in game ready shape right now. But we're here to talk about Jordan Canada. I mean, thirty one points in two games, shooting ten of eighteen and a hundred percent from the line. But as you touched on, she hit some very clutch. She gets fouled on the three point shot, which the one downside of her stats right now is she's zero for two for three so far in those two games. Um, like to see her get a little more confident, get her legs under herself and shoot those shots a little bit better, more accurately. But she misses the, the, the three phantom call fine, but she's still fouled or, I mean, she's still called for it or goes to the line, hits all three clutch free throws. And then in overtime comes up with a dagger of a steal and layup for what, in my opinion, really sealed the game uh, at a certain point in overtime. Jordan Canada comes from Seattle championship pedigree where she wasn't top dog. She was the backup. What I've seen so far is a calm collective vet who learned a lot from the likes of Jewel Lloyd and Sue Bird and Dan Hughes, and now is ready for a bigger role. <clears throat> yeah. And, and, and in some ways I would imagine probably has a little bit of a chip on her shoulder, you know, with the way things Has-to. turned out in Seattle, I, I would anticipate. Um, I think, I mean, I, I'm a big Canada fan. I'm a really big Jordan Canada advocate. I, I love the way she plays. Um, you know, the, the, the fascinating aspect to me, <clears throat> you know, with Chicago, why are you picking her up at 90 feet? Understanding like she's not going to, sh- she's not going to shoot the three, you know, she is not a major three point threat. Um, that was just one little side note that I was thinking of during that game. I'm like, why are we even like, like can just contest that, you know, why are you even picking her up and putting yourself in that type of situation? But nonetheless, we could, we could nitpick every tiny little um, error <laughs> that every team had over the course of the weekend. And, and probably all of us even had it. It, it is opening weekend. We're, we're all getting the dust off of us, but yeah, Canada, I mean, really, really good showing for her. And, and I think, you know, you're back home, you're in LA, um, you know, this was a, a guard heavy roster that was kind of going through camp. It, it was going to kind of yet to be determined. How is this going to play out from a guard standpoint? Taya Cooper gets waived, um, probably, you know, surprised a lot of people, but Jordan Canada getting it done. And, and again, Utah, I think the biggest aspect is that, 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 that experienced veteran mentality that she brings to this team and, and combined with that chip on her shoulder. I also want to make note of Lexi Brown. I was really impressed with the way. Lexi played this weekend. I mean, you know, for someone that was signed to a training camp and there was questions as to would she even make it to this point? uh, I thought she played really well. She hit, she knocked down some big shots and that's exactly what she was on this team to do. So I just want to give a little shout out to Lexi Brown. I thought she played really well. Another player I want to give a shout out to is Dana Evans. Um, Speaking of chip on the shoulder, (laughs) if you're on social media, I mean, what was it a day or two, Rachel, before the season starts, um, there was some, some 
tweeting going you on. I think that some... out to me. I didn't see it, and, and I, I know I gotta let me see <laughs> if I can if I can pull it up. But essentially, the funny part to me is I'm pretty sure my tweet was what started this whole thread or whatever. But end of the day, um, okay, here we go. Got questions about opening weekend for our next show? Well, you didn't. Uh, we will be selecting a few fan questions to discuss in the show. What do you want to know? And uh, a Dreams fan, ENFP Dreams fan, said, which of these sophomores have the most production after not receiving much playing time last season? McDonald, Awak, or Dana Evans? Uh, another, I'm not going to, you know what? I'm not going to air people's dirty laundry out. <laughs> Someone basically questioned uh, Dana Evans, to which Dana Evans replied, thanks, I needed this today. <laughs> and then she goes out and has a, a little heck of a night. I'm Like in my mind, she took that, made it her home screen, hey. hung her phone up in her locker room, and drops 24 in that game. I mean, that's what it's about, you know? I mean, the, the fans and people who follow this league have a right to their opinion and a right to question things. The players have a right to take whatever that might be and use it as fuel to motivate themselves. I think, it, obviously, this is just, a, in my opinion, a fun little scenario where, again, I mean, you have a player like Dana Evans who, you know, I think was was overlooked in some ways fell a little bit later into the draft, used that as motivation. You know, this is a player and I have watched Dana play since she was like in eighth grade. So she's always had kind of that type of mentality, this chip on her shoulder. She's gone. She's a, she is a high level competitor who knows how to take little slides, not necessarily personally to the point where, you know, she gets all up in arms in them, but she's going to take moments like that and use them as motivation and fuel. And she's shown that time and time again in her career you know, then, I mean, I think you combine just the experience that she had in Chicago last year, what, what it takes to win a championship. You're playing along one of the best point guards in the game and, and Courtney Vandersloot. I mean, love Dana Evans. I always have um, really like just just so excited for her and, and just the confidence she showed over the weekend, you know, and, and Chicago's going to need that. They, they need that at this position primarily. And um, I think the best thing is like, you know, she, she, she proved that she's more than just someone who can come in and facilitate and, and give you, mm -hmm. um, you know, decent minutes without, without too much of a drop off. She came in and showed like, Hey, I can be a spark that kind of provides th this, this certain elements to this team that we might need in critical moments. And, and she did that. So she took her game kind of to that next level over the weekend. And hopefully that gives her enough confidence to keep going, moving forward. You gotta hope. I mean, it, it was an impressive showing. Yeah. The Twitter world was blown up about it. Um, I don't think she's going to have some, you know, some locker board. What, what's the term? <laughs> it's not billboard material. It's not locker room material. It's like, whatever, pinboard yeah. material, whatever it is. Whatever. <laughs> Inspiration. All right. My hometown team just looking lost, um, like a Californian in Minnesota in November. Um it's a snow joke for those who don't get it. Um, <laughs> I mean, look, there was questionable cuts. I, I shouldn't say questionable cuts. There was controversial cuts because um, the cuts happened. There's not a question about that. This team, um, Millick. All right, Rachel, sorry. The Millick hype train, Jessica Shepard's looked good, but that's about the only positive thing I've seen from Minnesota. Um, just looking lost until... Dantas is back healthy. Angel shows up for the second game. They look completely lost until like midway through the third quarter and a little bit of the fourth quarter. Rachel Bantam's just not doing what she was brought there to do. Achanwa might have hurt, gotten injured again on like yeah. the one positive play I saw from her. Um, just a team that is in disarray and is not living up to the, you know, let's let's make a push for Sill. I understand they're missing three starters. Um, I understand that they're also missing, um, you know, a player who, well, I say, yeah, I mean, uh, whatever. This is a team that is, not, the roster is not built where we're going to see them later in this season. We knew it was going to be a rough start for the Minnesota Lynx. I just think, I mean, it looks like a preseason game, right? It, like the preseason games, the teams looked more put together I, based off what I've been told because you can't watch them. Uh, than this. Rachel, how concerned are you um, if you're a Lynx fan and or Sylvia Fowles? I mean, I think you also, I mean, it was ugly. It was not a good weekend for Minnesota. That is for damn sure. Um, especially Sunday. That was just, 
it was painful, you know, just, 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 um, just hard to watch. So, but at this, at the same time, you know, I, I, this is a team that we knew, you know, even you, you're, you're a Minnesota native and that's kind of in some ways your team, you even said like, this team is going to struggle early on. Um, just because of the makeup of, of what this roster is, how this roster is laid out, like it's going to take some time. Obviously, Kayla McBride coming, Dantas coming back, uh, whenever that might be, it's not going to be this week. So that, that certainly hurts. But being able to add those pieces back, you know, you've got to have Dantas playing well. Um, I think I think I take away a lot of the bright spots. Jessica Shepard is on my short list of early season most improved, <laughs> way yeah. too early, early season most improved. And I think we had talked about it on our last show. You know, it's going to take a player like Shepard having a breakout season for this team to be successful. Now it's about getting the rest of the pieces comfortable and gelling together. I mean, people like Odyssey Sims has been with the team like for a week. I mean, I even saw a report that said she was preparing for life after the WNBA before she got the call. So, I mean, on TV, I don't know if you saw, there was a, uh, there was a cut to her coming out of the game, running over to a garbage can. And I heard reports that, I mean, she was just gassed throwing up because like she was not, I mean, how long? Right, it hasn't even been a week with no, the team. No, I mean, I, I, I'm I'm trying to remember when we when we broke that. I think it was literally a week ago. So you know, I I, I think that that's going to take some time. The gelling of this roster and and you add the pieces that have yet to return in, and you know, it was just in disarray and it wasn't pretty. But I am not panicking for Minnesota. I mean, you know, I saw. Mitchell talk about the fact that, oh man, they were 0-4 last year. This feels a little bit different. I agree. It does feel a little bit different just because in my mind, Mm -hmm. Sunday was that ugly. Um, But I'm willing to kind of take a lighter stance on it and just kind of like, let's see what the next couple weeks, what happens. Because I think a player like Odyssey Sims in the position that she's in, there's so there's a lot on her shoulders, right? So it's going to take her some time. And and they they couldn't even get the ball into, into fouls. Um, and just the turnovers and, and they were kind of like, they were just tired turnovers, not just from Sims. I'm talking about the whole team. So it's just going to take time. Um, I think defensively, they've got a lot of things they've got to shore up, but obviously a frustrating weekend. I'm not panicking. Um, I'm going to give it at least, at least two weeks before I start to stress. I mean, at the end of the day, we've said it time and time again, this team is going to find a way to manufacture wins. And answer me this because I saw someone tweet this out. I, I apologize for ever tweeted out because I'm stealing your idea. Um, saw someone tweet out after the Lynx game something to the effect of um, a list of like I think it was like D Rob, um, Mo Jeff, and one one or two other uh, point guards, and it was kind of like okay, so which one of these players is going to ask to be released at and like make the you know the Astu deal. Um, so they basically cut the deal. So it does, it's not the whole cap hit and then sign at a vet minimum in Minnesota. And then of course the next day, Mojeff, uh, gets waived by Dallas Yeah. in your mind, like, okay, Lasia Claritin comes in and I realize we're diving a little bit too deep in this right now, but I, I just got this idea and it, like the Mojeff news just came out. <laughs> um, Lasia Claritin joins the team after a four game skid to start last season. Do you, what do you think the odds are? You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I, you know, I, I was thinking about it. I was writing my column this morning and I was like, do we see a roster change among, amongst this roster? I 100% think yes, at some point, one way or another, something could, could go down. Am I, I would feel a little more like, you haven't even given this current one a chance. <laughs> and, yeah, and what does that I look think, like? Yeah. Like who gets cut, who gets released, who's terminated? Man. Um, <laughs> we know how you feel about that. That is for certain. Look, I, you know, I, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, this, you, you know, you, you, you part ways with Clarendon because of the risk and the health aspect of that. You look at what happened on this team uh, this over the weekend. I'm like, man, this guard play is questionable at best. So yes. where's yeah, where's Dan? I mean, look, uh, here's my thing. Last year going into the season, Reeves stressed Bannum is best as a two guard, and we can use her for her shooting ability. She's not the type to orchestrate an offense. We've had her in that role before and it hasn't worked. Like I I'm maybe I'm making this up and I dreamt this, but like <laughs> I believe that was the narrative going into last year why we kept Bannum. Um and now they shift it to this. So, you know, like when you look at it from that perspective, I have to think at a certain point, 
I don't care if former players from the team are calling her the glue. If she's not producing, for sure, find some different glue. Yes, yes. If the glue ain't sticking, but, get but, some. You know, the question other is: glue. the question is, you know, when do you make that call? You know, is, yeah. is it right now? You know, give it another game or two. Yeah, exactly. I, I hear that. So. There's probably a percentage. I'm sure Reeve has like the stats of, you know, four game, whatever it is. Um, on a positive note, these Las Vegas Aces uh, under uh, Becky are just running. I mean, I ran a marathon. And I'm exhausted looking at this team play basketball. Yeah. Um, yeah. Only concern is the depth. Their starters are playing right around 31 minutes in both games, even in game, even in game one, which was a, like a, a blowout against the Mercury. Yeah. Um, what's your thought on the Aces? Are you at all concerned about that? Do you think Becky has some genius plot to like super exercise them early in the season so the team's ready, then ease in the the reserves? And then they're, you know, I don't know. Is this is this like a, some genius plan to get their legs under themselves? I can't I can't speak to that. But what I can say is is, is it's one thing to hang 108 up against Phoenix, which yeah. I have serious <laughs> concerns there about their ability to get stops. It's another, you know, to have that type of offensive production against Seattle in my mind. You know, at least the Seattle with the pieces that we know that it can be. So, I mean. Say, I agree. I agree. I mean, really, really impressive. Like what they are doing offensively. I love the pace. Like I'm tired thinking about it, just like you. Um, I love the three ball game. I think Jack Young looks phenomenal. I think even though Kelsey Young had a or uh, Kelsey Plum had a rough shooting night, still finds ways to manufacture points. Gets herself to the free throw line. Free throw line. Seven assists. Like. I mean, and then and then you throw in Asia Wilson, Derek Hamby combined for like 34 rebounds and 30. I mean, it was just unbelievable um, the amount of dominance. They didn't just show from an offensive standpoint, but they were so good defensively too. Again, my biggest concern, all th- those five starters played 34 plus minutes Sunday night. And I think the bench, you know, it was like a drastic drop off. And, and they were a little more balanced than game one against um, Phoenix. I think, you know, you throw Raquana Williams in there. Um, that obviously helps the depth in some ways, but yeah, that's going to be the biggest concern with Las Vegas is, all right, you know, who else on this bench outside of Raquana is going to, you know, kind of, kind of be able to implement and give us, give us something. <laughs> is it Kirsten Bell? Is it going to be Plaisance? You know, I, I don't know. It was just a little bit concerning to see some of those minutes on Sunday night. Yeah, I, I will say I, I, I have high hopes for Plaisance. Um, yes. I think, now that she's healthier, um, she looks much more like the player that, you know, we expected her to be and that her career is projecting towards. Yeah. Another player I want to talk about who had a showing and has looked, look, the, you know, Ryan Howard had a great opening game. Um, there's been multiple rookies. In fact, I tweeted this out. I don't remember a rookie class that was so impactful in opening weekend in a very long time. Yeah. Um, Destiny Henderson, yep, Henny going off. I mean, whew. fun, just fun, and the poise, right? Like, right. that's so... what that's what I want to talk about, Rachel. She looked like a vet. Well, and that's the thing, and and like just just completely, and she always has kind of a stoic like face, right? Like, doesn't show a lot of emotion. She just stays level, and I think that's part of what makes Henny so fascinating. Is, I mean. And we could talk about this with several of the rookies from Shakira Austin to Melissa Smith Mm -hmm. to Ryan Howard to Destiny Henderson. Those are the ones that come to mind of just the level of like, I belong here, you know, and it's not like burden, burden, burden too. Sure. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like on defense. It's not like we're faking this to make it like we, there is a true, like we belong in this moment. We belong at the table and we're here and we're going to do what we do. Was really, a confidence. Yeah, it was a it was a really unique level of confidence. I'm, I mean, outside of the super superstars, I'm not sure we've seen in in a while in a rookie class, and so that was really really fun to watch. And Henderson, um, you know, a, kind of a little bit similar to like a Dana Evans almost, like right, like a lot of people thought, oh, going to go earlier in the first round, and and kind of fell to that second, and now like is showcasing what, um, you know, they're capable of. I think this is a great example of like, you know it doesn't necessarily, this sounds bad, but like, it doesn't, isn't necessarily a slap in the face. You know, when, if, if your player, your favorite player falls in the second round, so many times this draft has to do with need and, 
even just a bit of a gamble with a certain certain player, i.e. a player like Maya Hollingshed, who was waived from Las Vegas. So um, really, really impressed with those rookies in particular. And Henderson played great. I mean, she she was she's exactly what Indiana needs from a poised point guard who can facilitate the offense while still, you know, being a threat offensively themselves. Oh, last player that we have to talk about real quick. Uh, just a shout out. We're not going to dive into this, but Natasha Cloud. Wow. She's she spoke it and she she talked the talk. She's walking the walk. <laughs> so fun to see that because Rachel, we've been talking about this for years. I mean, we had her on the podcast years ago, and at that point, we were like, "Shoot the ball, shoot the ball, shoot the ball." Yeah. And you know, she's so fun and nice and respectful and like, oh, and humble and like, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> she, she like obviously she wouldn't talk like that. She's got that swagger, but. In that championship year, we saw her turn that switch on, and we're seeing her turn that switch on early in this season. That's great to see. Basketball, the WNBA is just more fun when she's balling out. Yeah. Um, let's get over to pick them for Tuesday's Ooh. games. Aces at Mystics, which is a tough one, so I'm making you go first. Oh, my God. Hold on. Aces at Mystics. Um you know, Elena's supposed to play, right? That's my understanding. Del- Delhi is uh, serving up the cold cuts, and uh, <laughs> Hawkins is playing also. Ooh, that'll that'll be a fun game. You know, I think. Um, oh, I haven't even had a chance to look at these games. You know, I'm gonna say I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for Coach T versus Becky. Yeah, like I'm excited to see what Coach T's gonna throw at them to try and slow down that team. Yeah, I mean, I. I'm really that that's going to tell us a lot I think in that game um I think it could go either way but since it's at home and I think Las Vegas is going to kind of come down to earth just a little bit um uh, I'm going to give the edge to Washington and I'm probably going to okay. I'm probably going to regret it but that's what I'm going with because I'm down one and I kind of need to make a comeback here I feel <laughs> like I'm going to regret it also but I'm going Vegas um <laughs> Yeah, you know. Okay. I'll, all right, let's go. Links at Fever. I really want to go Fever on this, honestly. I mean, the fact that we're both hesitating for a second is progress. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I think that Minnesota will bounce back. I think at the end of the day, um, you know, they they get they get a couple. Well, really, not long. You get a day under. Well, exa- that's the that's the that's the craziest part about this is like. In my mind, I, you know, last season or any season, the Lynx have struggled. I've always said like after a loss is one of the most dangerous. You don't like Cheryl Reeve knows how to inspire a team after a loss, this, this, and that. And I'm sitting here and I'm going, they just have a travel day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like they're traveling today. They play tomorrow. Or I would assume they're traveling today. Um. So yeah, that's where it's tough. And Indiana's sitting at home. You know, I, I'm going to go Indiana. You know what? Because you're going Indiana, I really want to, but I also want no, to be able to up. like, yeah, I'm going, I'll go Minnesota, even though I don't want to, you'll go Indiana. Okay. And let's do Wednesday cool. as well, just for the sake of it. All right. List me the games. I don't have them in front of me. We've got Los Angeles Sparks at the Atlanta Dream. Ooh. I'm going LA. Yeah, me too. Al- although I would love um, if... Uh, Erica Wheeler just went off crazy. Like, that would okay, be you fun. do that. I do that. Erica Wheeler redemption game. Right. It would be fun. But yeah, I agree. I just don't know. Like, they're going to play big ball. I expect, I know we've seen a lot of the sparks staggering Liz and NECA. I think we're going to have to see, I, honest, like, I think we're going to see more NECA and Liz together in that game just because of how the matchups are going to go. Maybe I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think you have to go LA, the star power is just going to overpower the youth and like the new wave that's happening it's there. So and what's the other game? It's still so early. We don't know anything that's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's the thing, like <laughs> Rachel, like we've talked about this. I honestly, I know we're closing on the 30 minute mark. I apologize listeners <laughs> trying to keep the episode shorter, but no, like I, I feel like we are very much, you know, at a point of preseason, at least in, in yours and my mindset of like, we're still trying to get a feel of what these teams are. We weren't able to watch the preseason games. How do you expect us to analyze them? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So it makes it fun. Is, yeah, exactly. All right. Who we got next? We have New York at Chicago. I'm going Chicago. I think they bounce back. I think they um, redeem themselves a little bit. Um, 
again, I felt like they, they definitely easily could be one and zero right now after, you know, a tough kind of finish in the final, you know, final minutes of the last game. I'm going Chicago. Yeah. I'm with you on that one. And then last one, we got la- Seattle storm at Phoenix Mercury. <laughs> All right. And we're both. <laughs> um, I'm going Seattle. Yeah. Yeah, I just, yeah. Um, I just, I have a lot of concerns with Phoenix right now, but we will. Uh, I, I just don't think defensively they're going to be able to slow down Seattle at all. Yeah, not even remotely. So, yeah, no. All right, cool. Um, all right, Rachel, what's our uh, what's our sign out? Oh man, song? why do you put this on me? I. I do the intro, you do the outro. It's a deal. All right. We appreciate you all checking us out. As always, thank you. Add us with your questions, comments, concerns. If you can't stand us, we understand. Uh, Thank you for joining us today. We will talk to you soon.